Hi everyone and welcome to the current lesson for IQ Designer and My Design Center. The principles that you're learning are going to be good on all high-end brother or baby lock single needle and multi-needle machines with IQ Designer and My Design Center. Your screen may not look exactly the same and that's okay. Like I said, the principles will apply. All right, so in the previous lesson we talked about what type of drawings and printouts will get a good scan. So what I did was I took one of my printouts and put it on the scan mat. Just make sure you're not covering up your color balance bars over here. I used only the amount of magnets needed to keep my paper down and my paper is all on that white area of the scan mat itself. We are ready to get started scanning. What I always tell people in class is dim the lights in your room. I feel that that lets you get a better scan. So I'll turn off my light here and now we're going to focus directly on the screen. We're at our home screen and I'm going to go into IQ Designer or if you have a brother, My Design Center. So I'll press IQ and then I'll press OK. The machine will calibrate and my scan mat is moving over to the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a line image. Most of the time, and I say most, when you have a line drawing that you saw before on my mat, it's black and white. You have nice, solid, definitive lines. That will be the line image that you want to select. There are exceptions to that rule and we'll cover them as we go through this scanning process. But basically a black and white image is going to be create line image. So I'll press that or a line drawing. Then I'm going to press my scan button right here and then press OK. The machine is going to calibrate. It's going to scan. All right, so let's see what it produces on my screen. Okay, so when you get to this screen, you have red arrows in the lower right and upper left. Those arrows, arrows are for cropping, but before I even crop, do you see what happened up here? It cut off some of my design. So I will have to rescan. So right now I'm going to go over to my scan mat and just move that paper a little bit more toward me so I can make sure I'm scanning the whole thing. So to rescan, I'm just going to press the home key, press OK, and then I'm going to go back into IQ Designer, press OK, and then go back and create the line image. And then I'm going to press scan and press OK. And now let's examine the image. Everything looks good. This is just a picture. And so again, you have your cropping arrows at the lower right and upper left. So I'm going to take the lower right cropping arrow and you hold your either your finger or your stylus to the screen while you are moving that red line. And then I'll go to the upper left hand corner again we want to crop out everything we don't need. So I like to try to get fairly close to the design because we don't want to digitize our magnets. We just want to digitize the design. All right, so I'm going to press OK. And this is the design that it has scanned. Now, you do have something called grayscale detection down here. Grayscale detection can be used to improve the appearance of the design. So let's say you see a lot of noise in your design. And what I mean by noise are extra little lines and flecks and things like that. Then you're going to want to experiment with grayscale detection. So for example, if I press my left arrow key, with my blue arrow going all the way over to the left and press retry, let's see how that looks. Now see how that produces more noise, okay? So that's not what we want. I will go all the way over to the right, press retry, and there, you know what? I think that produced about the cleanest scan. Let me just go over one more time to the left, press retry, and I'm really gonna look at this fairly close you know what, in retrospect, I think the middle one has produced the best scan. All right, so once I get the grayscale detection level to where I want it to be, and I'm looking for a little extra lines, little flex in there, when you get it to where you want, press set, and then you're go it's going to take you to this screen or a screen that looks like this. Now, 
I realize we cropped out the magnets, okay? And you see how we're still seeing those magnets? This is a principle that I really have to drill into people when I have them in class. So the point needs to be made here that what you're looking at is the design itself, but you're also looking at the picture underneath. So think of this in terms of layers like this. This is the scanning layer. This scanning layer is the picture. You can't change your picture, but you can change the design that you're working with. Now your design is going to look very similar to the scanned picture. However, if you make changes, this is what really can kind of freak people out in a way. So let me go into size. If I press size and I reduce the size, oh gosh, if you're looking really close, you can see the outline, what we want to digitize, superimposed over the picture in the back. And the picture in the back is what really can throw people off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press this little icon right down here at the left because this will take my design back to its original size, back to the default. These arrows right here are extremely important. If you're working on a single needle machine, these arrows may be located somewhere up here. So I am going to press this right arrow key going all the way over to the right and you will see that background picture totally disappeared. There are times where you may want to make your digitized design, the design that you're working with disappear and only see the background. So as you go one way or the other, it will either highlight the background or it will highlight just the design that you're working with that you want to digitize. I always tell people in class, make that background disappear because if you don't, it can get very confusing. All right, so here we have the entire background. Here we have the entire background. If you've watched a previous video, you know what this screen is for. All right, so what I'm gonna do is look very carefully at my design. Right now I'm in the resizing page, so I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to increase the size up to 800% on mine. Now, if you can go higher, that's great, but I can't. And then what I'm going to do is use my magnification box right here. And I'm going to look around my design. And I'm going to look for noise and things that I don't want. So I'll go around... All right, right here is a fine example. I see an extra pixel right there at the top. So what I'm gonna do is take my eraser and because I'm, I am magnified, I wanna choose a small eraser setting. And I'm going to get my eraser to appear on the screen and I just took out that little extra pixel that was at the top of this portion right here. I have a little extra pixel over here. So again, I'm gonna take that pixel out and then I'm going to use my magnification box and just move it around again. There is a little fleck here. So again, I have my eraser, take that out. And this is what you wanna do. You wanna go all the way around the design. I see a little extra one right there that I don't think I want. And this is how you clean up a design. If you make a mistake like this, just press undo and it will go back and replace that last item you've done. Now, something like this in here, there seems like there's a couple extra pixels in here. You have to know how far you want to go in here and, and to make changes because sometimes it really uh, can get very involved. And some things I just leave in because I just figure, you know, it, it's not worth doing all of that. And then just what you're going to want to do is slowly go around and check the entire design for noise, unwanted, you know, things that you really don't want in that scan. So from here, we know from previous lessons that when you um, import a shape that it defaults to the zigzag stitch, that is no different here. If I press next and then I press preview and I press OK, it's going to take time to do its thing. All right, you can see right here that all of these lines are your sat your um your satin stitch. Okay, so going back, if I press return, then 
this can get a little complicated here because if I look very closely at this design right here, I can see that this little center shape is not highlighted. So if I don't use my locking key right here, my chain link icon, watch what happens when I go to change the satin stitch to a running stitch. Press OK, and then I'll press Preview, and then press OK. Now when you look at that image, you're gonna see that everything changed except for that center. Now this is a very important principle because when you scan using a piece of paper, it doesn't always scan all those lines together. And this is what I need to really drill into your brain. When you press return, I'm going to change this back to a zigzag stitch. All right, and then now what you want to do, if you want to change all of these lines together, you must press your chain link. And we've already covered this. So if the chain link is a mystery to you, you will have to view another lesson. Now when I do preview and press OK, now everything is going to be back to normal and you're going to see everything as that zigzag stitch again, that satin stitch. Press return. If you want to change everything together to a totally different type of stitch, use your chain link icon, press your zigzag stitch up here, press, hmm, what can we use here? I'm just going to use the triple bean and I'll change the color to a dark purple and press OK. And then I'll press preview and then press OK. Now you're going to see the entire design has changed. This is a really, really important concept. You need to use your chain link if you want to change all of those lines together. Very important. All right, here is my second scan I'm going to do. Different design, and notice that I put my magnets on correctly on this side, but I put it incorrectly on this side. And I'm going to show you why you always want to have your magnets like this as opposed to on a diagonal as well as working with another type of scan. All right, so I will dim the lights and I will focus on the screen for you. Turn your machine on and you will be at the home screen. Press your IQ Designer or My Design Center icon and then press OK. Your machine will move into the proper position. From here, we are working with a black and white design of even lines. We've discussed that in a previous lesson. So I know I want to create a line image. I'll click on this icon right here. Then I'm going to click on scan and press OK. The machine is going to calibrate and scan the design on our scan mat. Here is the resulting scan. And again, I'm going to use my cropping arrows. Press and hold that stylus to the screen. This side is very easy to crop, but watch what happens when I try to crop the design with diagonal magnets. Ooh, I can't get that entire magnet out. Now that's not a huge deal, but like I said before, this is where I'm creating more work for myself that I don't need. Anyway, I'm going to press OK, and it's gonna show me what I have to work with. Now again, I'm looking for noise. In the previous lesson, I talked about the grayscale detection, so I'll just do it once this time. I'll go all the way over to the left, Press retry and notice how I got more noise. You do want to play with the grayscale detection by pressing retry and just choose what you feel is the best option on your screen. I'm going to go back to the center, press retry because I know it was good, and then press set. So here we go. We're at set. Again, I'm seeing my background. I'm seeing two layers. I'm seeing the top layer that has the bounding box of the design I want to digitize, and I'm also seeing the picture underneath. I like to press this right arrow key to make the background disappear so it's not kind of confusing me as far as what I'm working with. Over here, I have my magnets. First thing I want to do is press on my eraser, and I'm going to use the magnet. I'll leave it at the default. Well, maybe I should go a little bit bigger, a little harder working with the small one. Go into the magnet again. I'll work with the large one. And that's a little bit better. And you may want to magnify it if you're really cleaning it up and you're looking for, I think I see a spot right there. Yep, got that one. You really have to look 
because these will digitize into stitches. So go all over. Magnification really helps when you do this. All right, so I have all of my design cleaned up as far as noise is concerned and any extra stray things that happen to make its way into the design. But now I want to press next and see how this looks. All right, I can see on this design right now Everything has the halo around it. It's not like the first design. As long as the halo effect is on every component of that design, when I decide to change this, maybe to, let's make it look crazy, a candle wicking stitch, I'll press purple, press OK, and then I will press preview. Let's see how this looks. I think it's going to look really crazy. Some of you out there have a lot of different types of line designs. Oh, maybe not as crazy as I thought. It actually looks pretty cool. But maybe I want to press return. And I'm going to change the size, the individual size of the candle wicking stitch down to the smallest setting. Press set. And then I'll press preview and I can check it out again. Let's see how that looks. You never know until you experiment and try. And that's what I want you to do. I think that looks pretty cool. All right. So you make whatever designs you want. We'll press return and I'll press cancel. Again, if we wanted to, we could go into changing the size. We could change the rotation. But to change the size... These are grayed out. Where's my red bounding box? Oh, that's right. I know what I have to do to get it. Press your select tool and then go all the way up and over. And then right here we have the red bounding box around our entire design. We could si resize it, rotate it, make a copy of it. I'm going to resize it and then go down in size. Now let's see how this looks. Remember, if you go down far in size, sometimes you can skew these lines and it looks a little bit weirder. So let's take a look at that. I'll press OK. And I'm going to magnify this design and use my magnification box. And I can see that some of my designs are not as crisp as what they should be. So be mindful of the size when you're increasing or decreasing, it could distort the actual design itself. All right, so what I will do is go back down to 100%. I'm going to press undo because I want to bring it back to the original size. And from here, I could do a lot of different changes. I hope you enjoyed watching this Lesson 9 video. And in the next video, Lesson 10, we're going to cover the crazy types of scans. The scans in which they're not perfect. The lines are of irregular shapes. We're going to go into a lot of detail. And I hope you join me in that lesson. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.